welcome back to another episode of Spiritual Superpowers. I'm Dawn, this is Karen, and today we are with Ivan from Rebel Star Tarot. Hi. We're going to discuss runes. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you for coming back. No problem. <laughs> thank you for having me. Ivan's been on our on our show before. We went over tarot readings yes. with you. And we'll include a link up above to that episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we're just super excited to get into this, into runes, because... I'm not overly familiar. I, I'm not that familiar either. So why don't you start by telling us what are runes? Runes is an ancient alphabet. It's a, it's a language um, by the Germanic, Germanic people. And earliest rune discoveries started showing up from archaeology and that, from um, stuff that was created back in 50 AD. But it could go as far back as 150 BC. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it was originally used as an alphabetic system, and then later on used as symbology. It was used in magic, and yeah, and the first system was the Elder Futhark system, which lasted for a few centuries. And then when Germanic people, tribes, started migrating throughout Europe, the Germanic tribes, when they started heading more to north, northwest, towards... England stuff, the Elder Fulark system changed to something called the Anglo-Saxon Futhork, mm. which grew to 30, from 28 to 32 letters. Mm. Oh. So they created more okay. letters for the vocabulary and for the vowels and stuff also too. And over to the east, towards Scandinavian countries like Sweden and that, they're the younger Futhark was created where they reduced it from 24 letters from the Elder Fulark down to 16 only. So they made them minimize it even more. And that's so those are the three main Futhark and Futhork. And you use the original. And, yeah, the Elder Futhark. Right. Okay. And now when I think of runes, I've always thought of a Viking connection. There was a Viking period for a certain, but it, 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 it was created way before the Viking period started okay. and continued way after the Viking period and in that as well too so yeah vikings did use it that's the symbology that's that people get from movies and yeah. comic books yeah. and stuff like that too yeah. but it's it, it, it existed before that and, and way after as well i didn't know that yeah and how did you get into all of this i like i say tarot was my gateway drug into <laughs> rooms yeah uh, after doing tarot for, for two years and took a reading with a friend from class, from a tarot class, on what should I do with my business and that. And she, the message was that I should think outside the box. I didn't understand it at the time. But in the back of my mind, I've always been interested in runes. A lot of music I listened to is a lot of Scandinavian bands. Mm -hmm. So I took it upon myself. I got books. I took the online courses. Uh, I got certified in some of those courses with the runes. Then I took Norse mythology. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to take other stuff that tied around runes to get an overall picture of what's going on mm -hmm. in that too. So, so you're an avid studier. Like you dove in head first into your tarot. You worked really hard. You committed to that. And then now you're down the rabbit hole with runes too. Yeah. And I, and I, and I also have a love for books now too. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't a big book reader before, but I've been buying books like every week. And slowly my fascination with runes and learning the basic meanings turned more into a lifestyle with practical exercises and routines that I do to try and get more in tune with the runes. And it's a part of me now. And like I said, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's something that I do every day or every night there. I, I do my routines and exercises to keep in tune with what's going on. Yeah, this was something I didn't know. It's almost like a... Oh, it's, yeah, like a, a lifestyle. A lifestyle, like, a belief yeah. system. Yeah, and so like, why don't you tell us a little bit about like what your routine is? The routine that I do, it's about an hour long routine. It's a routine that involves meditation, visualizing the runes with your eyes closed, visualizing the runes and attaching thoughts or pictures to each rune state for its meanings. And keywords also involves journaling. So early in the morning before I go to work, I pick a rune of the day, carry it in my pocket. At the end of the night, journal it. I write down how my day is and how it relates to that rune put it under my pillow, sleep with it, and then the following morning, rinse and repeat. My nightly routines, like I said, it's about an hour long. It's a lot, it's what they call Galder. It's a lot of vocal breathing exercises and enunciation of vowels. Each rune has 
a certain vocalic valor form to, to, and the more and when you're standing in a certain position and doing this Galder exercise, you're inviting the, the forces or the energies of the runes into you and being in tune with them. Mm -hmm. You know what's really interesting, and it was just coming to me as Ivan, mean, you were speaking about this, is, you know, a lot of different cultures have their specific divination tools and, you know, practices, spiritual practices, but there's always similar elements like the meditation, you know, yeah. and, um, and journaling and, then, and yeah. journaling and all of that the sound. So, like, yeah. And also I discovered too, but the energy wheels like chakra, like chakra too, mm -hmm. it's pretty similar. Okay. And a lot of the focus, a lot of the energy focus with runes on the solar plexus. And once you get that going and balanced, it helps balance yourself. It brings awareness. You learn more about yourself, the self discovery, not just about yourself, but how you could help out the external world, the community around you as well. So all of that comes into play when you do a reading. Yeah. Okay. How mm -hmm. much of your day when it comes to your practice, do you actually do a reading? Like, it sounds like it's, it's, you know, I came into this thinking that we were just going to talk about room readings, but it sounds like that's such a small part and that it's like, it's a whole system. Like okay. Systems whole... of like 180 days straight, right? Yes. It's, it's a nine, there's nine doors, so there's the nine doors of Midgard, which is the nine worlds in the Norse cosmology in that okay. place. So door one, it was 180 days constantly. No door two was another 180 days of exercises. And door three, which is what I'm doing now, is 240 days to complete. And at that point, once the first two doors are done, then I sent in my application to the official rune guild down in the States to become an initiate, mm -hmm. to be wow. a starter. So you have to learn all that first. So 180 days plus 180 days, that's a lot to take in. Just to might perhaps be accepted into the room guild and you have to journal everything. You have to, you know, you have to have all your proof and stuff too. You have to keep track of any changes. I felt some personal changes that I wrote down on my journals during the studies. Uh, my, I noticed I would have a candlelight. So I would just see like the orange glow. It's not just this, it's all around me now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's it's expansive now. It's wide all around me when I close my eyes, which is pretty pretty cool. That is really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. yeah, I just love how like committed and dedicated you are to your craft, and that you had this intuition to you know move towards that and yeah. you know, followed it. And I think that's what we like to try to tell our viewers is you know use your intuition, and your intuition will guide you. Um, yeah. I also learned how to integrate it with uh, tarot also too. Sometimes I'll do a post and like I offer online one of my e-readings, it's a combination of tarot and runes because you know, I found the bridge to, between the two to offer that as a reading and in my post was pretty good. Yeah, I can feel like the passion, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm getting all caught up in it. Yeah, yeah it's great. Sure. Ah, I'm loving that. If someone yeah. were to come to you for a reading, how it works okay. on my website too i offer what we call e-readings a three rune reading which is just a three room three room poll we call them or a tarot and rune reading if you want to stick with the traditional yeah that kind of sounds stuff. like a fun combination and also too i offer a three rune reading via zoom as well okay and that's so that's oh, like okay. that's a half hour session okay. so for now with rune pools it's just basically you could use regular tarot card spreads past present future any tarot card spreads and just replace the cards with runes ah well, that makes do, sense which makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. for people getting into uh runes and want to do a few rune rune spreads uh, like like readings for other people it's just yeah you treat it like tarot oh, i'm loving oh, okay. this um, would you like to do a little demo? Um, if you're going to do a reading for someone, how does it go? Um, once I'm asked a question, I focus on the question while I'm in my little, little room bag here. Okay. I shuffle up and I pull out one at a time. And what we're going to do, we're going to do a past, present, future mm -hmm. kind of spread, similar yeah. to a tarot spread. So my question for today is, what kind of opportunities are coming my way? Okay. Yeah, we'll work with that one. So we got a jump roll, right? Yeah. Well, so not, again, like not, a tarot. Like, like tarot cards. Not intentionally. Stage. Not intentionally. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's... Okay. I'm 
Let's watch it. So are you waiting for images to flood into your mind or what are any, you? Any messages. Any messages. When you, when you, when you okay. pull a ruin, you're supposed to turn it over nine times and see if it falls on bright on a bright side or what they call merc side. Mm -hmm. the number nine is a magical number you're going to see a lot in rune poems, North mythology and stuff like that. When it comes to rune casting and that there, it's mentioned a few times in some poems and stuff from back in the day, like in the mm -hmm. 14th, 14th century, but there's no definite guideline or rules. A lot of it is as, like assumptions on how it was done based on descriptions in, in poems. So. And when you get runes that look the same, whether you put them upside or down like that, mm -hmm. there's no negative meaning. Yeah. Same, same thing with this rune, Isa. It's the same thing, so there's no negative. So with, with we got the first one with Stagas, which is um, daylight or daybreak. It's an awakening. It's um, like a revelation or, or a new chapter in that there. So in the past position, we have some cl some clarity is something that happened recently in the past that gave you like an aha moment or something does that speak speak anything at all mm -hmm. yeah. yes absolutely i had some pretty crazy things happen at the dr joe conference that we went to and gained a lot of insight out of that so that was that was in january yeah. of here we have fehu which is prosperity uh, what we're talking about earlier today with uh, the first letter of food arc in that there, but I have it reversed So some sort of a, a lack of abundance a stoppage mm -hmm. uh, Moving forward in that there it's like there's like a brick of wall and or something from 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 moving ahead at, at the moment there um, That's what I'm getting with with the reversed Fehu rune Because yeah. we we're talking about the fire of expansion also to that energy that energy is not it's stuck. It's not moving forward. Yeah, I feel like uh, a lot of the work that I do, I'm holding back on and uh, to focus more on, you know, health challenges and that sort of thing. Yeah, so that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The third rune for the for the future rune is Algis, and Algis is a rune of protection. Uh, it's also a rune that represents a spiritual connection. Um, there's a lot of symbolisms with the runes. It looks like the letter Y. You can see it as mankind reaching out his arms to, to, to the skies to, to get in touch with, with, the, with the gods or the heavens coming up in the future as well too. So there might be some tests and tribulations. It could be a loss of spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. Well, Maybe question yourself and question some things and that, which is coming up in the future as well, too. And, and it's not like you do sometimes, like we all do, right? We all question, question yeah. and some days. Yeah. And, uh, and you have. We, yeah. And I'm so that makes sense, too, because I, you know, do that. It happens. Yeah. It happens, yeah. And for the special feature, which I had another one on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so almost like a, a, a jumper rune, like jumper tarot cards. But this is a good one. It's Isa. And this is what my practice is based all around. Isa is the ego, the solar plexus, the, that balance, that finding yourself and knowing yourself and an awareness. So this one, we could probably serve as some sort of a shadow card, which I used mm, to pull from the that's bottom right. of the deck. That's right. Yes, yes. So subconsciously, root of you asking that question is probably to find some sort of a balance or identity. Just to be like, you want to be sure of yourself. You want to be sure of what you're doing, mm -hmm. who you are, mm -hmm. and what you're about. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I can see, I, as you were just saying, it's like, oh, yep, yeah, that, yep, yeah, and that. I'm thinking of all these examples. And with the present one, I mean, there was some movement forward, and then there was yeah. some stop, especially with business and stuff right, like that, right? right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, like, I just, I heard so much of that in your life. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. No problem, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I love how, like, you did go with the shadow card way yeah. of it and why you would ask the question, because I think that was actually yes. bang on. Right. <laughs> why would, why would you ask Yeah. Yes. what opportunities are coming? Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Yay. Okay. All cool. right. Well, um, we hope you like this video. So if you did, please give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so. 
we love new subscribers <laughs> yes we do but make sure to also scroll down at the end of this episode find all of ivan's information yes. links to the courses your website your social media and pick up those books check out the courses because this seems really cool yeah and if anybody has any questions all about ruins just just send me an email and message me out i'm, I'm more than glad to help out and spread the word well, yeah. Thank you so much for coming all the way up here and for um, doing a demonstration for us and talking runes because I, I mentioned I'd looked it up, but what you explain is so much more than what Wikipedia we, says. <laughs> what we talked about is just a small tip of the iceberg wow. of what runes is about. And that, like I told you earlier, runes is, is that cosmic onion. And, and, yes. and it's, it's only like the first layer we took mm -hmm. off there. Yeah. It, could, yeah. it could get intense. Yeah. yeah. And I love that it's a system, like a practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. A lifestyle. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. Be sure to tune in again um, for next week's episode. And uh, take care and we'll see you again. Okay. Bye. Bye.